Welcome to Toastmasters Time, the show that has everybody talking. I'm Ashley Harkness. I'll be your host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. We have a very special, exciting show for us. And to help us to, with that, to give us some more information about it, please welcome our Chief Judge, Ian Griffin. Ian, tell us about what we have going on tonight. Well, thanks, Ashley. Tonight, we've got a very special Toastmaster time. We've got two of the three finalists from the International Speech Contest, which was held in Oakland in May of 2013. Now, these are two of the three finalists. One of them will be going on to the global international speech contest that will be held in Cincinnati in August. So we've got two of the best speakers from District 57, the San Francisco Bay Area, strutting their stuff at Toastmaster time this evening. Wow, yeah, and that sounds like we're going to have a very, very special show. So thank you very much. We'll be getting back to you a little bit later in the program. But right now, I want to introduce you our, our first speaker, Ray Engan. Ray, welcome to Toastmaster Time. How are you tonight? Oh, fantastic. It's great to be here, Ashley. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come to be a Toastmaster? I uh, had a friend that was in Toastmasters, and I used to enjoy getting in front of people, and I didn't have an outlet for it. And he said, come on out and check it out. And that's how I joined the Toast of Petaluma, and I've been there for three years now. Toast of Petaluma, three years. That's a really nice club. That's a very nice. Now, this is the first time you've con competed in a contest, is it? Uh, no, it's not. I okay. First year I competed in the humorous contest, and I got to the district finals that year. District finals in the humorous speech contest. Oh, that means you've probably put some humor into this speech you're going to give us tonight, right? Well, hopefully that comes through. I'm, yeah. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Well, you, I know that you practice this a lot. Did you have to get in front of a lot of other clubs to give some practice to your presentation? Uh, I've given it to probably 10 different clubs as we've gone through this process, and, and we'll probably give it to uh, several more before we're through. So. <laughs> oh, probably. Now, one of the things I've always wondered about, do you feel that competing in a contest has, has made you a better speaker? There's something a little extra about the fire that you have about speaking in front of people that when you're, you want to put your best foot forward, you always want to put your best foot forward, but mm. if there's a, uh, anything that's on the line, I'm, I'm game. I love, to, I love to compete. I love to play. How about confidence? Do you think that uh, being a uh, contest presenter has improved your confidence level? Absolutely, absolutely. It, it, if you uh, go in front, and even if you watch these contests, and you go through and you go, wow, that was fantastic. I think I could do that, and, and that's what I did last year. I saw the, the finals in the district and thought, wow, that would be great to be up there in the next year, and that's what I, that's what I, that was set my goal for it, and, and here I am. And so here you are. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you're anxious to give your speech, and we're anxious to hear from you. So I'm going to give you a moment or so to get over to take your mark and get ready. And during that time, I'm going to tell the audience a little bit more about this speech. Each contestant in this speech contest went on a journey that started in their home club where they competed against their club members. Then they advanced to an area contest where they competed against seven or eight other club members from different clubs. Then to a division contest, which has had even more competition and finally to the international speech contest for the district where he actually had to compete against over 300 individuals to get to that particular level. At that conference he spoke in front of 400 plus Toastmasters all anxiously waiting to hear what he had to say. The winner of this contest as you heard earlier will go on to the international conference which will be in Cincinnati in August. So I see that our speaker is ready and on his mark. It's time for me to introduce him. So, our speaker, Ray Engen, with his presentation, The Shyest Hero. The Shyest Hero, Ray Engen. I was five years old and living the dream. A fresh-faced, chubby-cheeked, toe-headed tot, ready to rock my very first Halloween costume. My favorite TV hero, Na 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 Batman! Then Biff, kapow! Zot, zowie! They canceled his show. Holy heartache, Batman. You left a puzzled boy wondering. Fellow Toastmasters, heroes are puzzling growing up. They can be so magical, but more often than not, they fail us. Disappear get arrested, become involved in an incident in a strip club. Who are the real heroes? It's those individuals who help us understand that anything is possible in life. That's where magic 
truly begins. I discovered the magic of my hero the day that John Huber strutted into room D4 of Bel Air School to teach the fifth grade. Mr. Huber commanded and demanded complete engagement with flair, style, showmanship, and a genuine joy for life. He had the ability to draw any shy child out of their shell. And at that point in my life, I was painfully shy. At that point in my life, I was still living down a devastating kindergarten catastrophe that had the school psychologist referring to me as suffering from something he called peekaboo syndrome. <laughs> if I couldn't see you, then you couldn't see me. See, at the time of my life, my stylish mother used to wear these wraparound skirts. And if my shyness got the best of me, I would just walk inside of her wraparound skirt. Then at the very first open house night, in front of every parent, every student, every teacher in the school, one of the teachers, Mrs. Carrillo, happened to wear the same wraparound skirt as my mom. It looked the same from where I stood. Everyone laughed at me. I became the boy that put the shh in shy, destined to be forgotten. Four years later, four different teachers, I was still the same shy child. Then Mr. Huber walked in to teach the fifth grade. Mr. Huber didn't see me as a kid with a shyness problem, but I was more of a puzzle that needed to be pieced together. Oh, he noticed that I didn't speak up in class, but he also saw that I sat next to the class clown and would whisper things for him to say. He called me the class clown's head writer, a regular Cyrano de Robin Williams. And Mr. Huber had a plan. See, every year, Bel Air put on a Shakespearean play. That year, Mr. Huber was the director. He chose me to play the lead. So day after day, in rehearsal after rehearsal, scene after scene, line by line, Mr. Huber showed me that the biggest hero was simply the person with the widest smile and the best attitude. The greatest star could elicit the most laughter and inspire an amazing array of emotions. I became the finest little Shakespearean actor that Bel Air Elementary School had ever seen. I ruled the tanbark thespian jungle. That experience gave me an insight at a young age about the amazing things that were possible in life. I couldn't wait to go to school. It was as if every day Mr. Huber greeted me holding a cup full of confidence and sent me home in the afternoon with an urn of unstoppability. At our graduation party, I spoke, unplanned, in front of all my classmates and all their parents, thanking the most amazing man who pulled me from the shadows of shyness, taught me to come alive, enjoy life, face my fears, and take them on. It was my very first standing ovation. And since it was impromptu, I I guess it was my very first table topic as well. But there was one parent that didn't stand. He was unmoved, untouched, looked angry. He pulled me aside later that afternoon, sat down with a very serious look on his face, and he said, I just want you to know that your hero, Mr. Huber, is gay. I was 10. I told him I agreed Mr. Huber was very happy. No, you don't get it, kid. Mr. Huber likes men. I was 10. Girls had cooties. That made me like Mr. Huber even more. I was 10 years old. My belief in Mr. Huber was unshakable because of Mr. Huber's belief in me. The path to success in life is neither marked nor well lit. And hopefully all of us 
in some point in our lives have had a Mr. Huber who gave us directions to that path, lit it up and told us to take that first step. But it's our responsibility to take that first step. Folks, find your first step. Mine was simple. I simply mirrored Mr. Huber's confidence and joy for life. Find the personality traits that you admire in others and make them your own. Piece together your own puzzle of personal empowerment because every day we're lighting paths for others and we don't even realize it. Don't look up to your heroes. Look into them. I started sending thank you notes to all the people that helped me put the puzzle of my life together. I sent Mr. Huber's last week. I have one more to go. Does anyone have Batman's address? Thank you. What an inspirational presentation. And now it's time for us to take a short break. This is Toastmaster time. We will be right back. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease Freedom like requires this, leadership, no and leadership requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. And with me now is our second speaker, Patrick Lee. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Patrick, how long have you been a Toastmaster? Just over two and a half years now. Two and a half years. And mm -hmm. what brought you to Toastmaster? Actually, a friend of mine invited me to come and join one of the, attend one of the meetings. Mm -hmm. And once I went to the meeting, I said, wow, I can do this. You can do that. I can do this. I love the confidence. And I, I on really that. enjoyed it. And um, it's something that I'm really interested in as far as public speaking and getting out and speaking to people and being a motivation. So. Well, what brought you to be a contestant in the International Speech Contest? Well, shortly after joining, mm -hmm. about a week into joining, they had the humorous speech competition was starting at the club. So I jumped in and got started and the rest is history. I made my way all the way up to the district level at the humorous speech competition, but just kept going from there. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I enjoy Toastmasters so much is the competitions because you can learn and grow so quickly within the organization that way. I understand. In your speech that you're going to give, have you purposely put in humor for us to, to get to? I, I put a little bit in there. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult in my speech and somewhat to put too much humor in it because it is a tribute to my father. So I put a little bit in there for, for, for the audience purposes for the competition. But it's very serious to me. I understand. Would you recommend to others that they might want to get into these contests? Definitely. It's, it's an opportunity to grow so fast within the organization. And I've learned so much, had the opportunity to speak with a lot of the past world champions of public speakers, and they've provided me a lot of insights to help me grow. So it's one of those situations where every time you give your speech, there's at least 10 to 15, 20 people that's critiquing, evalu evaluating you, and willing to offer any type of assistance to make you a better speaker and presenter as well. Well, that sounds like the true tradition of Toastmasters, and I'm Definitely. glad you've had to benefit from that. Now, I know you're anxious to give your presentation, so we're going to give you a couple of minutes here to get set up on your mark. And while we're doing that, I'm going to tell the folks at home a little bit more about how this speech contest works. You're seeing winners of the international speech, but it may not be that an inspirational speech is your forte, particularly in a personal speech. As a result, there are many other opportunities for speech contests for Toastmasters. We have a humorous speech contest where the most humorous speech is the winner. We also have an evaluation contest where people come in and actually evaluate a target speaker. Evaluations are very important. They're vital to the Toastmasters. So we are going to also have to uh, table topics in property speaking. And sometimes that can be even more of a challenge than anything else. I see that our speaker is ready, he's on his mark, and so it is time for me to do my job and introduce him. Please help me welcome Patrick Lee with his presentation, Seeds of Purpose, 
Seeds of Purpose, Patrick Lee. Swing low, sweet chariots, coming forward to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariots, coming forward to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, a mid 1800s spiritual. One of my father's most favorite songs and the actual last song that I ever heard my father sing. Fellow Toastmasters, your spiritual life while here on this earth may be short when compared to eternity, but the seeds of purpose that you plant while here on this earth within the lives of others have an opportunity to live forever. I remember the last telephone conversation I had with my father as I was living in California and he was in Oklahoma. Hey, Dad, what are you doing? Oh, not much, son, just at the church cooking. Oh, okay. I'm just at home watching a basketball game. Tell me, what is wrong with your Oklahoma Sooners as they are getting crushed right now by 20 points? Hold on, son. Talk to your Uncle Richard. And after he commenced to pass me around the entire kitchen for the next 10 minutes, my father got back on the phone and said he had to call me back because he had to finish cooking and cleaning. The next day while getting dressed for work, I noticed I had a missed call from my mother then for my brother, and then for my niece. I continued to get dressed and I drove to work and still no call from my father. When I got to my office, I sat down at my desk and I reluctantly called my mother, only to have her tell me what I feared in life the most. She said, your father was rushed to the hospital today. He's in a coma on life support and he probably will not make it through. It was like a freight train hitting me right in my chest, knocking the life right out of me. And I began to drown in the salty ocean filled with my very own tears. And as I struggled to gather myself and try to figure out what to do next, I decided to drive home from California to Oklahoma, 26 hours of straight driving. And that trip was a journey that changed my life forever. Have you ever lost a loved one and can understand the many thoughts feelings and emotions that I was going through at that time. I went through many stages of the grieving process in one day, from feeling shock, anger, hostility, depression, and withdrawal, to finally feeling a sense of peace, wisdom, and appreciation. Have you ever spoke to somebody that no one else could see? I spoke to my father that day because I knew that he was there with me in spirit. I said, I love you, Dad. Thank you for adopting me at the age of five years old. For waking me up every morning with breakfast on the stove as you left for work. For every whipping that you gave me, only to ensure that I knew the difference between right and wrong. You were always there for me when I needed you most. You see, in life, there are givers and there are takers. And my father was definitely a giver. He served 49 years, 11 months, and 13 days in the Army and Civil Service with tours of duty in Korea and Vietnam. He continued to serve our local community church all the way through to the day of his transitioning, cooking, cleaning, taking out the trash, mentoring our youth, and being a positive example to serve everyone around you. I am who I am today because of the seeds of purpose that he planted within me many years ago. And my father will continue to live through me because those seeds he planted in me will continue to grow in me and out of me and into my daughter and into her children and their future children and so on. And I'm so proud of my father today because he finished his life fulfilling purpose. Your purpose will not be found at a destination, whereas all of our physical destinations upon this earth will ultimately be death. But the purpose and meaning of your life will be found within the journey along the many different paths that it takes for you to get there. Your purpose is what you're made for. And to have purpose is to have meaning. 
It is up to you to define who you are and who you want to become. And it's never too late. What seeds are you planting? Seeds of love? Seeds of thought? Seeds of service? Seeds of giving? Plant whatever seeds your purpose may be. And as we leave here today, I hope that the seed that I planted within you will grow and lead and guide you through a purpose-filled life. And as my father would say if he were here today, now you know what to do. In closing, and as a tribute to my father, the conclusion of Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And sometimes I am up. And sometimes I am down. But still my soul feels heavenly bound. And if I get there before you do, I will cut a hole and I will pull you through. But if you get there before I do, tell all of my friends and my father that I'm coming to. Thank you. Truly inspirational. We have to take another short break. This is Toastmasters time. We'll be right back. Name an effective political yeah. leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease Freedom like requires that, leadership, and, and leadership requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. I'm here with Ian Griffin, our chief judge. Ian, you heard the speeches. What do you think? Well, Ashley, it's obvious we had two speakers today who well deserved their top place finishing in the District 57 International Speech Contest. It's hard to decide which of those two gentlemen really deserves to go on to Cincinnati. I know towards the end of the show, you're going to reveal to us who the winner was. Mm. But from where I sit, they were both very well constructed and delivered speeches. Very different speeches, don't you think? Yeah, very different. But, you know, in some ways, they revealed the structure underlying the speech that, as a Toastmaster, even one who's only been, say, a member for a month or two, you'd recognize because they used the, uh, many of the aspects of the Competent Communicators Manual. They obviously had well-structured speeches. They delivered with vocal variety. They used gestures. And, and of course, they used them as, as uh, experts would. But I think any Toastmaster with a, a, f a few ex uh, months of experience would recognize the, s the threads they were pulling in. Do you think there might be one or two specific things about an international speech contest that sets it apart from all of the other speeches given by Toastmasters? <sighs> Well, yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what we saw tonight is these are not off-the-cuff speeches. Mm -hmm. Both gentlemen, I think, would agree that they, you, in fact, yeah, I remember you asked a couple of questions about how many times you delivered this speech. And the beauty of a Toastmaster who really knows the material is this, these were very well-rehearsed speeches, but they sounded as, as spontaneous and as an effective as if they were given for the first time. Mm. So I think it was that mixture of being well rehearsed, knowing the material, but being able to deliver it fresh this evening that made it made a, a winning speech combination. I was impressed by how motivational both of the speakers were, both from their, their different perspectives, the one about the father, the one about the teacher that made the big difference. And I sense that motivation and inspiration is at the heart of international speech. Yeah, I mean, it can be definitely in contrast to the humorous speech contest, which would be more of a, uh, a light-hearted look at life. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have the judging form here mm -hmm. that judges use at the speech contest. And in fact, if any 
Toastmaster plans to enter an international speech contest, take a look at the judging form. Half the uh, score is awarded for content, mm -hmm. um, speech development and structure and speech value, the, the logic and the ideas. Uh, the other half is split between the delivery and the language used. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I actually make my living as a speech writer, so it kind of is... Uh, is pleasing to me that half the score for an international contest is or is ordered or is given for that content because that was really they were well written speeches they 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 didn't just pull ideas out at random no they didn't they they had a structure to them and they took us on a journey a story as it were and there were also some unexpected twists i mean mm -hmm. the twists were conveyed uh, visually if you like you know the first speaker who very much uh, had it nailed as far as on his knees, he looked like a 10-year-old. Well, mm, that was did. great. I mean, that, I don't think that was an accident. I think he would practiced and rehearsed that, and it looked good uh, when he delivered it here, and I'm sure he practiced in front of a mirror. The second speaker used the, the song, the, the spiritual, as an opening. Very powerful. Drew us right in, and he had uh, the format of the delivery. I couldn't do that. That's not my strength. I have a terrible singing voice, but he was playing to his strengths, and, and it, it tied in so well with the theme. He was also connecting with the audience because the first speaker was talking about Batman, a comic hero that we all know, mm -hmm. and the other one was speaking about a spiritual that many of us heard or learned to sing when we were in school. So I think it really happened well. Yep. Now, I, there's one piece of business here I know that you're interested in, and that is that I need to reveal who, who was the winner. The winners, <laughs> yeah. The winners of the speech contest for District 57 at the conference we had Ray Engan taking first place with Patrick Lee coming in second, second place. Uh, Ray will go to Cincinnati, as we said earlier, and Ray will back him up if it is necessary. Well, what a show, huh? It was. Fantastic. Wish they could all be this good, but right. you know. <laughs> I want to thank uh, all of us here at uh, Toastmaster Time because we're getting near the wrap-up point. Uh, Toastmaster Time is uh, put together at the Mid Peninsula Media Center in Palo Alto. If you want to find out more about us, you can go to ToastmasterTime.com. That's our website. Also, the D57 website, which is d57tm.org. And if you want more information about Toastmasters, there's www. Toastmasters.org. We appreciate all the wonderful staff that's made this presentation uh, work. Thank you very much, Ian, and to our speakers tonight. Uh, I guess it's time to say it's been a great show. We're going to wrap it up. And from all of us at Toastmaster Time, we invite you to join Toastmasters and keep talking.